now. All right, so for this uh, chiral catalyst, one of the easiest and simplest and probably oldest uh, chiral catalysts would be like something like a box, what we call a box catalyst, right? Then you don't have to try to write this out. So a box catalyst looks like this. Uh -oh. And then on one side of it, you have a, a chiral center. I'm just gonna put a R group here. And then on the other side of it, you have a chiral center. And that is usually bound to a metal, some metal here. And then when you add A and B together, well, if you add A first, <laughs> when B approaches, this catalyst is gonna force B to come from a, a specific direction, right? So you see over here where this, if it tried to come from here, it will be blocked. So it's gonna go to the top? Mm -hmm. So it, it's gonna come from, from this side, right? Cause you see how R is going back into the page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So B, B can only approach from that side because it costs less energy, right? So that's what right. I will, that's what a chiral, and so when you get to the product, all of this, all of this, the product that comes from B coming from this direction, you're going to get that enantiomer, a lot of it. And then <laughs> the other enantiomer where B comes from this direction, right? You're going to get some of that, but not as much, right? This is bad. Right? So that's, that's how you enrich the product and one enantiomer over another. You put a catalyst in there that creates a bias. And so one pathway is gonna be preferred over the other pathway and boom, you get chiral products, right? Cause normally if you take two achiral things, you only get a racemic mixture. So you have to put, a, you have to create a bias to get, uh, in order to get that mixture to be enriched in one of those stereoisomers. All right, let me put that here. I have a question. Go ahead. So is it a rule that substituents on a wedge are always going to be preferred, I guess, less, no, less, or like bad, I guess, less preferable than mm, the ones that no, are no, dash? Not, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. It depends. It's all case by case. Okay. Right. I'm just using this example here to show how the catalyst actually works. But sometimes, I mean, you have a, you have to think. B could come from this side, right? Because R is pointing back. But on the flip side, it could also come from underneath this side where R is pointed up, right? Okay. So it's all case by case. It just depends on which pathway is the lowest in energy to get A and B reacting together. That's what that's okay. what really matters. That's a good okay. question, though. All right, are we okay with that? So that's one way. The other way, so using a chiral catalyst is one way, or asymmetric catalysis. And then the other way to induce chirality is to have a pre-existing stereocenter. So you use a molecule with a pre-existing stereocenter. Uh-oh. Right, so that's the second way. There's another way too, but I'm not really going to talk about it because I don't want to dump too much on you all at once. All right. So if you have a, a molecule like this, right, let's say you want to do, uh, let's say you want to do a hydrogenation. Y'all remember that reaction? Which one? Hydrogenation. Do y'all remember that from uh, G chem? I mean, from organic one, where you add H2? It's somewhat. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. If I'm being honest, I'll just... thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Somewhat, somewhat. I'm, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna go back and talk about it, right? So this is chiral. Yes, everybody agree. Yes. And we want to react. We want to do a reaction on this carbonyl. So that chiral center is gonna dictate what happens at this site. So. is gonna dictate what happens at that site. I'm just gonna say it blocks the reactive site. Right, it's gonna block the reactive site. How, we'll find out. 
So let's say I add, I'm not even going to do a hydrogenation. I'm going to do a reduction. So let's say I add H minus. Y'all remember that from part one, a hydride? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. H minus, y'all remember that? Like you can do like a hydride shift or you can add H minus like a nucleophile to any to a carbonyl. Oh, a nucleophile. Okay. Yeah, it's a nucleophile, right? So it's going to attack the carbonyl. So let's let's look at it. Uh, so if I attack here, right, and then pop this open. Don't panic, because we we studied carbonyl additions a little bit in part one, but we're going to study them a lot more here. So don't worry about it if you don't, if you haven't seen it, right? I should get, I'm going to get two products from that. I'm going to get, I'm going to change the colors of them. I'm going to get this. So is it the hydrogen attacking the double bond? Mm -hmm. It's attacking the carbon okay. the double bond. Oh, carbon and double. Okay. I'm going to get this. Where O minus is here and H is here. Y'all following that? Yes. Yeah. H, is, H can come from the backside. Mm -hmm. You following? Or... Mm -hmm. What's my other alternative? Come on, let's use some logic. Where else can uh, it come from? It can come underneath. Come underneath it, right? Or, or it come from the same side as where, where BR is. Are you following? So let's, yeah. let's, let, let's show that. Let me change the color of that. So boom, here. And now bromine doesn't change, right? Because that's already set before you do the reaction. Mm -hmm. Follow? So now H can come here. And then we can have O going back like that. Yes or no? I got to pick in that pen. So how does it allow it to do that? It's okay. Yeah. So, so everything is based on, hold up. Sorry. My pen is, I got, it's too thin. I don't like how it looks. Right. There we go. So everything is based on energetics, right? Which mm -hmm. pathway is, is the highest or lowest in energy? Because with all these types of reactions, you got competition going on. Are you following? So O has a lower one than bromine? Mm-mm, mm-mm. The pathway, like you agree that right here in this product, H came from the other side of where bromine is. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Because you see bromine is coming out. Of, I wish I had a model to show this. But you see how bromine is coming out of the page? Yeah, on the left. Uh-huh. And so on in the product, you see H is behind, it's going back into the page. Yeah. That means so that that's right. the side that it attacked from. Okay. All right. Let me let me see if I can draw it like make a, a, a 2D depiction of it. So bromine is sticking out here, right? Mm -hmm. So H can either come from this side, right? Which will it which will have it look have it like this. Let me erase that arrow. If it came from this side. It will be here. Is that right? Yes. Relative to bromine. If it came from this side, it's going to be here, just like bromine. Are you following? Oh, okay. So in the product, you see how it's dashed? That means it came from the opposite side of where bromine is. Mm -hmm. And then in the, in the second product, it's wedged right here. That means it came from the same side that bromine is on. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. Okay. So with that being said, one of those two is going to be favored, right? Mm -hmm. H is H is a I should have used a different nucleophile to be honest with you because H is so small. But the concept we'll just worry about the concept, and then when we look at the other problems, it'll make sense, right? <laughs> so ideally, uh, when you add a nucleophile or add something close to a chiral center, you don't want those two to be on the same side, right? You want to add you'll add from the opposite side. Are you following? Mm -hmm. Because the, add from the opposite side. Yeah, because this is blocking the front face or the front side, right? So H is going to prefer to come from from the opposite direction. Are you following? Yes. So that's what that chiral, that pre existing chiral center does is it creates a bias, so that whatever your nucleophile coming your incoming nucleophile is. Is not going. It's, it doesn't want to see bromine. It wants to come in from the back door where bro, of where bromine is, or whatever is there. Okay. Right? So bro, I'm gonna write, try to write that as succinctly as possible. Bromine blocks 
one phase. Okay, so to be clear with reactions like this, mm -hmm. we're looking if whether or not the new, I guess a nucleophile is gonna come from a dash direction or a wedge direction from yes. the front, front or the back? It's either gonna come from the same side okay. that a group is or from the opposite side. Okay. Right, does that make sense? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so if that's the case there, which one of those do you think is gonna be favored? The one on the dash where hydrogen's on the where, dash. Where it came from the opposite side. It's, it's going to cost right. less energy to get there. Are you following? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, because you got two competing pathways. So what happens is you're going to get two products. One of them is going to be favored. The other one is going to be disfavored. So we'll call this one the major product. Right? Because that's the one that is easier to access. And it's, low, it's, it's, lower, it's a lower energy pathway to get to that. Okay. Right. And then by default, the blue product becomes the minor. Minor product. Right. That's what you call a product distribution. Isn't minor like it the easiest way for it to penetrate the mm -mm. <clears throat> the minor product is always the product that costs more energy to get to. Right. I want you to think about this. I, wh wh where are you from? I'm from Florida. Florida. All right. Let's say you walk to the store. You got a corner store in your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Let's say you walk into the corner store, right? You got your neighbor on your left has a Rottweiler in the front yard on a short, on a long chain that can reach the sidewalk. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Yes. But you can also go around the corner and go another way to get to the store when you don't have to pass that Rottweiler. Are you following? Mm -hmm. One of them is going to take is going to cost you more energy. You walk past that Rottweiler, you you stand the chance of that dog coming all the way out there on that chain and, and attacking you. Right? right. But if you go the other way, it doesn't cost as much energy. That's what this. That's the same thing that's happening here. One okay. pathway is is going to cost more energy than the other. So the pathway that costs the most energy is going to give you less of a, a less product. Are you following? Because everything in chemistry happens so that the, that you follow the path of least resistance. So the lowest, the low energy pathway is going to give you more product. That's what the major product is. That's the low. Mm, okay, so major and minor regard is towards how much product you receive. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. No rot wallows, right? Mm hmm. All right, so you get two products, and what's the what's the other part? What if what if both things were well, a chiral? What would I get? A race Yeah, what's you would get 50, 50 both. When I have a chiral chiral center already there, I don't get a racemic mixture. I'm mm -hmm. going to get an unequal mixture of stereoisomers. That's the that's the uh, the key term we're going to take away from this before we move to that handout. Can you say that again about the unequal? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to write it right here. Chiral plus a chiral. Are you following that? Emic. Gives me an unequal oh. mixture. Oh, chiral, a chiral. I started with something oh. chiral, something a chiral, and that gives me an unequal mixture. So it's two ways to get that unequal mixture. You can start with something chiral or chiral uh, starting material with a pre-existing chiral center, or you can use asymmetric catalysis. They both give you unequal mixtures of stereoisomers. I should write that here. Is that making sense? Is it clicking somewhat? Somewhat. All right. So yeah. you can imagine, let me make one more point, <laughs> and then we're gonna move to this handout. You can imagine Okay, so this chiral center is controlling everything. You agree with that? It controls where the nucleophile can attack. Yes? Yes. So what do you think? What if you watch the video, what two what two factors make that chiral center either more influential or less influential? How close it is to the yeah. reaction site? So the close the proximity to the reaction site, very good. Who was that? Natalie. Man, you just, I ain't giving you no money today. 
<laughs> no, I'm messing. That's, but you're right. The proximity to the reaction site. What else? The large how big. It is. Yeah, how big it is. Very yeah, the ratio between um, the substituent is. Yeah, so yeah. proximity and size, right? Mm -hmm. These are the two factors that control how uh, a pre existing chiral center can influence the, the stereochemical chemi outcome. All right, I'm going to write this down. Sorry about that. All right, so size and proximity, those, those two things control how much the pre-existing chiral center uh, dictates the, the stereochemical outcome. A smaller group on the chiral center means it's not going to be as influential. What that means is that that product distribution between major and minor, the percentage is going to dip, right? You'll have, mm -hmm. a, you'll have a lot more minor because the other pathway is not as unfavorable as it would have been, right? When you shrink down the size or you put it further away, right? Are, are, are y'all okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump to this handout. And then we can we can make this make sense. I think I I don't remember who asked the question at the beginning of class. It was me. One of the two. Okay. Is it is it starting to come clear now or, or no? Um, like that part we just did, I kind of understood that part already. Okay. okay. It was a it was a two questions on the quiz. Cause I'm not I'm not good that good with keeping. Yeah, stop playing. You you, you uh. You beating yourself before you even run the race. You are that good. It just you just got to get to the point where you you have the confidence to say, okay, I can do this. I can just figure out what I need to know to get it done. Yeah, you're that good. Don't work. Don't 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 defeat yourself now before you take off, because this is just the first week. Okay. Yeah, come on now. Got to be. You got to have confidence, and then that'll take you. You know. That'll take you further than just telling yourself, oh, I can't do this. Mm -mm. Tell yourself you can't do it. Then we got to figure out how to get to it, how to get to the end. All right? Okay. Let's look at the first example, first uh, example on the handout. All right. Uh, does everybody remember this reaction, hydroboration, oxidation from, oh, from uh, organic one? Mm. I feel like I do. Yeah, remember if you take a an alkene, a double bond, and you treat it with uh, BH3, and then follow that up with hydrogen peroxide, you can convert it to an alcohol. It's a way to convert alkenes into alcohols. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, that was a, that was a, mm -hmm, yeah, whatever. No. <laughs> I'm listening, I'm listening. Yeah, please don't make me remember this. <laughs> but, but here's the so the th this reaction right here is just a way to convert uh, alkenes into alcohols, right? If you took the class this summer, this should be fresh. If you took part one this summer, this should be fresh. There's a and, and there's another um, there's another piece to it in that it's it. I don't, let me go back to here. All right. How much time we got? Oh, we got time. We got 20 minutes. All right. Let me go back to here. So if you take a alkene, right, like this one, and you treat it, you treat it with BH3. I'm only reviewing this because the silence was definite. It makes no sense to go forward unless we can have some kind of uh, idea of what's going on. All right, so here's here's the reaction, right? And then right. The, in the product, I'm going to get – no, hold up. Let me do that. Let me change that because I don't want, I don't want to confuse you. Come on, all right, I'm going to get this. 
right? Do you see why the OH added? Excuse me, yes. Mm-hmm. So the OH added to that carbon. Right, any both of these reactions, hydroboration and then oxymercuration, the the essence is that you add H and OH to the double bond. So you add H to one side, OH to the other side. Even if you don't know how it happened, that's the outcome. Right? The OH okay. added here. So this is what we call anti Markovnikov. Y'all remember Markovnikov? Rule. Mm -mm. No, no, I don't think. Ain't even gonna lie. We probably didn't even get that far. Yes, yeah. you did. Did y'all do? Did y'all do this reaction? I know you did. Don't lie to me now. If you, did you add HCl across the double bond? You had to do that. That's like the bait. It looks familiar, but yeah. I don't think he put a name to it. I think he yeah. just, just did. I do not. So when you add HCl, right? You adding H and cl right and then this is going to attack here <coughs> and you end up with a an immediate with a carbocation on the most substituted carbon and then cl comes in and boom attacks that and then you end up with this right where h is added to this side and then chlorine to the other side okay Oh yeah, that looks familiar. Y'all remember that? Yes. So yes. this is this is an example of what we call more carbon carbon addition. What that means is that the nucleophile added to the most substituted side on the double bond. You see, on the double bond, you got two carbons, mm -hmm. and then one of the carbons has a has two H's on it, and then the other side you got an H, and then you got this CH three right here. So it's this side is more substituted. All right, so more common probability says you're gonna to add to that side. So using logic, what does anti-Markovnikov mean? If Markovnikov addition says you add the nucleophile to the most substituted side, what does anti mean? Um, yeah. It's the opposite, right? Anti means opposite or not or reverse. So it's you're gonna add to the least substituted side, which in this case would be here. Right? So you, you do hydroboration oxidation, you add an OH to the least substituted side and then H to the most substituted side. Right? So this is the product. This will make sense when we go back to that worksheet. Are you following? Dr. Russell, could you repeat um, what you said? Which part? All of you it? Said, you said you add what to the least substituted side for the anti? Uh, so for this reaction, <clears throat> which is hydroboration oxidation, which we're going to go back to that on the handout, so don't worry, worry about writing it down right now. But you're adding, in essence, you're adding H to one side and OH Come on now, OH to the other side. Mm -hmm. But you add OH for this reaction, you add OH to the least substituted side. And you add H to the most okay. substituted side. Right, so I get in, in part one, if you took it this summer or if you took it from me before, would have been last year. Uh, I get has a that's a mnemonic that I use is BAM right because there's two reactions that do the same thing this and the, and oxymercuration BAM is boron is anti Markovnikov and then oxymercuration is mem mercury is Markovnikov what you gonna see in a minute do you have um yeah. like videos for yeah. this I'm glad you said BAM. that. Cause volumes of video. Little assistance. I'm little okay, because I'm kind of confused. Like I'm know. here, but at the same time, certain points, I'm like, no. You have me, but you don't at the same time. All Maybe right. if we work a problem. Yeah, we're gonna work the problem. Then. What about that problem? Yeah, let's let's work, work the problem. And let me let me share something with you that you overlooked. Because so you probably weren't paying attention. 
Oh, you may you probably were, but you probably weren't. So let me let me share some with you that's already on Blackboard. Is that okay for two minutes? Then we we'll go mm -hmm. back. Oh, come on. My Wi-Fi, man, I'm telling you, it's bad. It was worse when I had that satellite Wi-Fi. Don't ever buy that. That's a waste oh. of time. That's retro. You should have knew that. Hmm. I ended up, I think when we first moved in this house, I ended up giving, I was teaching summer, organic one, over the summer. I ended up teaching the class on my hotspot every day. That's how <laughs> old the Wi-Fi was. I'm running Zoom with like 30 people on a on a hotspot. Oh, that's terrible. Yes. I hope you have unlimited data. I did. I, I planned for it. Because <laughs> I already knew we were going to be up the creek. All right. So can y'all see the screen? Yes. Yeah. So you go into, uh, where is this? Is this supplemental handouts? Quiz, I mean, course documents and supplemental handouts. Uh, where is that thing? So I have a. Oh no no no! Hold up, let me see. I'm gonna tell you exactly where it is. It's a handout in here. It's got to be in your course document. Got to be in here. Uh. Should be the first thing right here. You see where it says course documents and supplemental handouts, and then mm -hmm. Chem 320 reaction overview. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna show you what's in there. You you need to download this and save it somewhere. The Chem 320 over reaction overview. It's the third handout in supplemental handouts. Well, the fourth handout. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you. I think I showed this when we did uh, went over the syllabus and stuff, but I'll show you exactly all the reactions <coughs> that I'm talking about right now, they're already in here. You just need to refresh yourself, because I know you did it, because I know Abdallah didn't just not teach that. Um, that's all, all this stuff, like how to make alkynes, how to name them, uh, how to make alkenes, and then all those reactions, like that's electrophilic addition, that's the same thing we just finished talking about with HCl, and then halogenation, mm -hmm. and all these reactions from part one. And then here's the oxymercuration and uh, uh, hydroboration right here, the two reactions that we were talking about. Just the same. So you should download this. It'll help you. It'll refresh you anyway. Will be. Yeah. And it's right. It's in course document, course documents and supplemental handouts, and it's in the supplemental handouts folder. And it's this one right here. All right. You good on that? Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. All right. Let me go back to this. Uh, to my iPad. All right, now we can tackle this. We can tackle this handout here, I think. So the first, the, I, I gave you the products right here. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're not worried. We know that it's gonna, you're gonna get an alcohol. Let's talk about the, the question. Let's read the question. All right, don't worry about the name. I, we'll just say R, R, blah, blah, blah. Yields two stereoisomeric products in different amounts, 80 to 20. What is the 80-20 again? What do we call that? Unequal. Uh, unequal. It's, on, it's an unequal mixture, but when we got two products. Oh, non racemic mm -hmm. mixture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, non racemic unequal. But it's the product distribution, right? Mm -hmm. That's the ratio. Is that right? Yes. Yes. All right, so A says, I kind of gave it away because the okay. percentage is underneath. But it says, which product would you expect to be formed in the highest amount? A. I feel like it would be A. Say it again. I feel like A is the right answer. I don't know. It, it, what was your question? So which product would you expect to be formed in the highest amount? So you can see the percentages down there, right? So that's the product distribution. 
Yeah. Okay, so now let's ask this question. Why? Tell me why. Uh, because uh, there. So what is this? What what concept are we looking at again? What are we studying right now? We're looking at the pre-existing chiral scene. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's the concept. So do we have a pre-existing chiral scene right here? Yes. Okay. What does that What does that mean for the products? It means that, that you're gonna get a what? You're gonna get an unequal distribution. Unequal distribution, right? Mm -hmm. What does it mean for where the reaction takes place? What is that chiral center going to do to the reactive site, which in this case is going to be the it's double? Going to affect it. Going to affect it, right? Mm -hmm. right. right. Now look at the look at the chiral center. Tell me this. Where that chiral center is right now, which face is blocked before the any back. reaction takes place? The back of it's blocked. The back side. Well, black spot. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Yes. Think about yes. it. Yeah, the back side. It, so the, 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 the group itself, the chiral center is dashed, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So that means that it's going back into the page. Right? Yes. Right. So the, where, where is the Rottweiler? In this case, it's go. It's on the back side, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So this path is going to be for anything that's coming in to come from where? The front. The front. The front of it. That's right. So look at the two products and tell me why A is in eighty percent. Like long way. The OH so. is in the front. So, yeah, the hydroxide. Is more. In the front. You see where the OH is? It's coming. It came from the opposite side of where the group was pointing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. right. What does that mean? Right. Energetically, it means that that pathway was the lowest energy pathway. Are you following? Yes. Right. Because the other pathway will be to come from where the dog is. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which, right. Which product would that be? That would be B. Twenty percent. I was on the same side as the as the group that's already there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this would be higher energy. Right, because it will cost more energy for that OH to come from the same side of where that group is. Are you following? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this will be my major product, and it'll also be my lower energy pathway. So, is the major product usually lower energy? Say that again. So, is the major project, excuse me, major yeah. product usually lower? Yeah. Energy? That's why you get more of it. That's why you get oh. because it costs it, it, takes, it takes less energy to get to it, right? Okay. Let me let me give you a, uh, uh, an example from part one. Do y'all remember when we when in part one when you did like energy diagrams? Y'all remember that exothermic, endothermic transition? Oh yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So think of, <laughs> think of the starting material, right? Right here. Think of that as being here in, in this well, right? And you you got you can go here to get your product okay yeah or you can go here to get your product which one that has the lowest activation energy do y'all remember that the one on the left one, the one on the right here right mm -hmm. the right activation energy is this little gap right here in it mm -hmm. yeah yeah so okay yeah where right. my major product comes from are you following okay yes because it's, it's easier to access it this on the other hand this so this will be major and this, on the other hand, has a higher activation energy, right? So this mm -hmm. is, that's the pathway that's going to give me a monocle. Because what, what's happening is you've got two competing pathways. So you can always come from the front side or from the back side, right? So you've got the competition. So the one that's going to win out is the one that, that happens the fastest in this case. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. All right. So what's the what's the answer to uh oh, we got five minutes? <laughs> what's the answer to B? What is the relationship? Because um A uh, is closer to the chiral center. Not closer, but it's it went the long way. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what in the same direction. A mean OH going the long way, saving energy, right? If mm -hmm. uh, that way. Uh, that's why it's major, yes. Yes. Okay, so so we answered A. 
which product would you expect to be forming house amount? I add, I tacked on another question to that because I gave you the percentages. So then I asked why. So now we know why, right? Mm -hmm. What about B? What's the relationship between the two products? Are they enantiomers? They're they enantiomers. Are no, they yes. Dials. No, it's dials. 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 You see this? So now let's, yeah, let's look at the two cars. So you got a, the chiral centers are here, right? Mm -hmm. Now look at the other side. What changed? The OH. Both of them changed or did only one of them change? Just mm -hmm. only OH. One. So these are, they are diastereomers, aren't they? Yes. Now if they both changed, then they will be what? Nitrient. Which, which? Yeah. Okay, so let's answer C. I think we already answered it, but somebody take a crack at answering that. C. Why? Why are oh. they? Why are they? They had a um, resisting. Speak up. Who was that? Natalie. <laughs> Come on, I heard it. You said it too. Go ahead. Uh, because there's already a pre-existing stereo center. Exactly. Which is going to do what? It's going to create what? It, it's going to affect the um, reactor side. It's going to hinder it. Yes. So it's gonna it's gonna create a bias, right? Mm -hmm. So that one of those products is favored over the other. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Who did you say you were? Natalie. You're trying to get all the money. Huh? That's all that. Is. Put her on. Put her on mute. Constant mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm not gonna put her on mute. That would be wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. No, that was good though. That's a good. That's that's good. That's a good answer. All right, let's go to the uh, second question. Let me see if y'all can figure this out. Matter of fact, since we're out of time, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look up what this reaction is for mm -hmm. Friday. Because I'm not, I'm not sending any new videos out for Friday. This is We're going to finish up with this. And then um, I think that's like one other topic, and then we're moving on to something else. So we're going to be on, on track for this first exam. We're going to have at least two content areas that we cover for that first exam. So I need you to look up what oxymercuration is. And hint, hint, it's on the handout that I just showed you in Blackboard. Uh, and then also, once you do that, then we can then we can open up class with that. Somebody going to be able to tell me the answer to that. Uh, and then we'll do we'll go through the paces with this problem like we did the first problem, and then we'll do number three. I also need you to look up what this is. So we're not wasting time talking about what it is. It's, it's, it's Turk Butyl. Oh yeah, okay. I want y'all to look that up, look up the shape, the structure of, of what Turk Butyl looks like. So we the Turk Butyl, like Turk. that O? Okay. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a tertiary butyl group. I'm going to erase that. Just Google it. So look in the index of your book, whichever one is faster. Just look it up because that's really going to be key to understanding number three. Okay. All right. We're good with that? Yes, sir. Right. Did y'all see the uh, link I sent you uh, with the, the uh, channel? I mean, the playlist for the class. Oh, video? yes. Oh, yes. I saw that. All right. Cool. Uh, so you wanted us to watch all of those, or do you want us to watch that one video from that playlist? Yeah, those are the recordings from the class. Okay. Uh, so if you need to rewatch, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go back and say, oh, what did Dr. Russell say right here? Boom, then you can go and watch it. And I found out um, that I can actually upload the whole video, the whole hour. I guess I've been on YouTube so long, they gave me some extra privileges. But I can actually upload the whole thing so it's, it doesn't, I don't have to chop it up. So chopping it takes like an hour, hour and a half just to make five five parts to, of one video. So, but now I can just upload it straight. So that's what I'm going to do when we get off. I'm just going to upload this lecture right back. Okay. Another video from um, the first lecture that we had, it's like black, so you can't see it. Which which one now? Say that again. The latest one that you uploaded, like a, like a day or two ago. Mm -hmm. Like you can see some of it, but then it'll go to a black screen for like thirty minutes, and then it'll come back to the screen. 
Mm. I have to check that out. What was it? The one from uh, Friday, last Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go and look at it. Maybe, maybe YouTube is playing games. Maybe they're fooling me. <laughs> yeah, it uploaded like the. I think it uploaded four of the different parts, but yeah, then like the one. whole huge video is only letting. Um, Thirty minutes of a show. Yeah, like it's like the whole part in the middle is blank. Oh, I wonder. Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. I probably cut. That was probably my fault. Cause if the if the other ones show the whole video, I think it was my fault. I was getting tired, and I think I chopped one piece, and I left a piece at the end. And when I processed it, it just processed the whole timeline, even if the middle was blank. So I think that's what happened. I'm gonna upload the full video from today. And if somebody looks at it, or just if you just go to it and kind of skip through it, let me know if, if whether or not the whole thing is there. And then that'll tell me if I need to keep chopping them up or if I can just upload the whole thing. So are you putting the um, videos in the Chem 321 